Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, I've shown this application before. It's called FastFlow, sorry, FlowGraph Designer, which is from Intel. Um, and basically what it is, it's to help generate C++ code for multi-threading of the Intel threading building blocks. Uh, library that I've shown is the open source one. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you some examples that uh, come with this. This is a Windows only app. So already, uh, <laughs> from my point of view, it's uh, causing all kinds of problems because it's on Windows. But whatever. Um, what I want to show you are just some simple examples of pipelining of. Uh, now there is a video out there that shows you what this thing can do, where you can run it, and it will analyze all your points of uh, concurrency of where the weak parts are in terms of processing. So uh, that's pretty good to do that. Um, so there is that functionality, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. <coughs> what I do want to show you is actually let me just go back here this is basically your your inflow going into this aggregator or join so you can have another input that you feed into here you have a I guess this pre-process function and then you can split them off into your separate algorithms so basically what we're talking about here in the world of trading we have our market data that comes in here we could send in another input maybe uh, if you want to do a comparison of maybe another uh, equity, in my case, pair of trains, you have two inputs, or maybe um, and then from there we run a series of algorithms that will run in parallel. So in my case, for the simple pair trading, we could use the first one to detect ATR, the second one could be maybe a stop loss, and the third one could be, as I've hinted at, the soft target and some other ones. Uh, and then what this will do is this, this will uh, join all the resulting results and I believe in here you can put in the logic on based upon the result if you want to enter the market or not and then there is another ability to go back and um, continue the process of feeding in more data and then you know just basically like, like a pipeline and then at the end we have our results uh, of, of an exit or something and do something else which would be putting an order out that sort of thing so um, that's one way of, of looking at this now um, when I look at the code generation part so these there, there are some examples of the code being generated this is a more obviously complicated one um, something to do with dining and looking for a piece of food, best, I don't know, whatever, but it just shows you how um, complex these um, can get. And then, of course, we get into the last one, which is probably the one that I'm looking at, is this one, um, where we can have, as I said, two inputs, this pre-process, up a series of algorithms that are run in parallel run it through this this result join make a decision if not we, we could feed it back into to get more data so there's different ways to go about it now the thing is if you finish up you can generate code from this um, okay so I'm not going to look at the or generate the code but it can be done here's the code that gets done this feature CPP and header file this graph XML is this graphical representation of what you're seeing so when I bring in um, our generated code which I believe is right here um, we have our stubs then we have our header let's check out um, 
picture like stubs. So if I load up our editor, pretty straightforward. So these are our, our functions that we're going to define. Here's some of the includes that we need, dependencies. Um, so it gives you all the stub code uh, that you want. So here, in this result join, uh, yeah, let's... so our result join is this guy, I believe, right here. Node name. See, each one of these is called a node, so that's our node. So if we go back here, we can then put in our code here the logic on what to do on the resulting, I guess, input from these two. Okay, so that is the header file. Now, if I go in and load up the C++, you can see here it's fairly straightforward. Um, our main. Um, we have our source nodes here that are defined, how we acquire that data. Um, I guess we can put in our rolling window, how much we're going to feed into uh, an array, I believe. Yes, image size, image size. And then here is the internal array of this case. Um, pretending to be an image for processing that. Um, so here we've got um, our A and B defined. Uh, and um, basically uh, we do some calculations here. So what we are referring to is the image source. And then we have another one buffer source. So let's take a look here. So um, this is the image source and this one's the buffer source. So here we, we've got the actual code. Uh, so we, we could customize the code uh, and the function within the fast flow or within the, the flow graph. Okay, I, I haven't seen that before. But that's pretty cool, actually. Um, and then we can set our parameters for the TBB, or whatever these may mean. Debug mode, and then we can run it from within, um, from within here, uh, the GUI of this fast graph. Now, if I take a look at um, the source node of the image source, here's the chart of the, the logic for here. So all of that, when we generate the code, gets defined uh, and, and generated within these nodes. That's pretty cool. The only sad part about this program is it's not available in other languages. So here we go. So we have here our, I guess some might call it a collector of data for these two. Um, just to showcase all that. And then boom, boom. These are our algorithms that we've defined um, for each. So we're returning the buffer and this is expecting a buffer. So in this join, result join, um, let's see. So 
so that will pass it off to this little guy here called the function node result reporter. So in here, remember we're getting the buffer. Uh, let's say one of these. We're returning buffer. Trace it back to this in the code result join. Result join. Okay, so here is our join feature like result join zero body zero join one. And then here we have our fast flow result reporter, which is this guy right here. So it's a tuple of a class specific for two, the flow class, I guess, which is part of the TDD, which interfaces with this fast flow, or sorry, with the, the, the TDD. Passing it in of the input right here. So this is the bu return buffer from the from these guys. Uh, so that's the input. Now you'll see that these are lambdas. Image number. Um, we have two flags found. Boolean one, found a, a Boolean. Interesting. So it's using there's some kind of ability where you can set flags within the first three elements of this uh, input array. If found, A or B. Detection of image number. Number. I'd have to really debug this to see how this works. I uh, might do just do that. Um, so that's an interesting way to build that out. Now, in my case, we're going to have three of these. Um, so let me just see here. Uh, we have feature detection, feature like. So this is our feature like, dining like, I'm not even going to look at that because of the complexity of it. Performance analysis on feature detection, which is what we're looking at. So now something similar, this has no custom C++ function. Interesting. Okay. Um, I guess I could run this to see what kind of output we would get, but I'm going to be honest, I don't see any real um, let's see, display graph nodes using a circular layout, display graph nodes using a radial hierarchical. Okay. Collection analysis designer. So that's a feature 
Hmm. Generate, we don't want to do that. Mode, move node, hierarchical, re radial, analytics, graph rule, compute. Okay, so we'll do a trace data collection. So let's do this. Compute. Count 251. In depth. Out degree total. Here we go. So this will tell us how many milliseconds it takes to run. And then the average concurrency. Interesting. Okay. So further compute graph statistics. Debug output. So I guess that will be helpful. Um, analyze graph rule. Check. Hmm. As I said, I'm trying to. So we have some low OK points. You can see less than a millisecond. There we go. Timeline charts. OK. So let me just try running this again. No specific timeline on a chart has been selected. Pause playback, zoom in and out. There you go. I guess we can run it again. So it's running all the simulated data. That's pretty powerful stuff. So I guess output data type must be a tuple of all redundant buffering. Wow, that's pretty good. Neat. Okay. So application details. Okay, well, it might not mean a lot, but in terms of um, being able to run this um, with, with your multi-threading environment, this may be pretty useful. I'm gonna try to basically take this cogeneration code and run it through um, my debugger, I guess, within the uh, PDB. Hmm, don't know which way to go yet, but uh, it's pretty interesting that you can design code from this. All right, so hopefully that may, I don't know, help you out or inspire you or something. All right, talk to you later.